Um, I just finished up a new member class at the end of September. I've had requests to do another one. So that's a good thing to have. So if you are interested in jumping in the next round of new member classes, that'll be starting in November. Mark that down, item number one. Um, this coming Wednesday, we are having meatloaf, potatoes, veggies, and pumpkin pie. We're going Midwest old school. So if you will be here for dinner uh, this, to, this uh, coming Wednesday, mark that down, item number two. If you would like to order a set of He Knows Your Name scripture cards to benefit the Kistler Coffee Corner, mark that there. You can learn more about those as you go down um, the hallway. Projects with a Purpose has a display for that as well. We're also looking ahead for setting up for Christmas. Uh, you may notice that there are some tape on the floor. Last, uh, last week and this coming week, uh, Opera Orlando... scenes events um, for folks to come and meet the cast, learn about the opera, uh, and then have a little bit of wine and cheese together. Um, they have offered one for us, and we've been taking reservations for that. That's coming up this Tuesday. Uh, that's not now filled, and we have 60 people who are attending. It is a marvelous thing. Well, um, the opera's uh, practicing here. That's coming up, and... What we're going to be doing is their next, I was trying to remember where I was going, I went completely blank. But I have, I have, I have recovered my brain. Item number four for Christmas decorating, we are decorating the weekend after Christmas because the first... <laughs> here you go. You're pastor for the day. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> the week after Thanksgiving, uh, December 2nd, we will be, they will be do, that afternoon they will be hosting a free dress rehearsal as a concert offered by St. John to the community of their Christmas uh, opera, Hansel and Gretel. So we're going to get everything decorated for their Christmas opera with having our Christmas decorations up. We'll be doing that December 1st. So we need all of our Christmas elves who've ever helped here before, who know where things go, to come out and give us a hand so we can get things set up for that. So that's item number four. Youth events, uh, Youth Service Day project uh, to clean up around Lake Killarney is coming up on uh, this coming Saturday. And a Stranger Things lock-in, the date is still in the works for that. So uh, if you are high school youth, watch your email for that. We always take time to recognize folks who are having birthdays and anniversaries, so if you are having either one this week, would you please come on down so we can celebrate with you? Let me check. Uh, is Jennifer back there? Can, um, uh, here comes Jennifer. Jennifer, are there still tickets available for Tuesday nights uh, behind the scenes with the opera? 62. Okay, if folks wish to sign up for that yet, how soon do they have to do it and who do they have to see? Tomorrow morning. And unlike everyone else who goes to these events, it's a $30 per ticket charge. For us, it's free. So come, have, have a great time, uh, and share in the love of the music. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> there you go. Hi, I'm Grace Shoemaker. My birthday's on Wednesday, and I'll be 18. Oh! Hi, my name is Ben Shoemaker, and my birthday is today, and I'm 56. <laughs> Steve and Denise Beamer, this, uh, in the next week or so, is our 42nd anniversary. Uh, I'm Jacob, and my birthday was Thursday, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm 23. 23. Yeah. All right. 
Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for birthdays and anniversaries, for the gifts of love and life. Continue to be with these folks now in the coming days. Remind them of your presence. Remind them of our love for them. For I pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, last but not least, Steve has an announcement as our deacon. A little shout out for our quilters who are giving their hands a rest after a busy year. We got a letter from um, Melanie Gibbons from Lutheran World Relief. Uh, the new shipments now have UPC labels on them, so we know exactly where they go in the world. And the report is that uh, our shipment went out July 9th with several other churches, and it went to Zambia World Help. And our quilts, school kits, personal care kits, and baby care kits served an estimated 4,000 children, women, and men caught in the vicious cycle of chronic poverty. So all thank you for your generous uh, donations for the quilts. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to, in a couple months, we'll have them back on the back of the, of the pews again. Thank you. Thank you. Do be sure to look at the other announcements. And again, a thank you to our ladies if, in case you weren't here. It was uh, over 200 quilts you sent once again this year. So these ladies work very hard every Thursday. And since this is Ministry Fair Sunday, they can always use more people who, to help. And you don't necessarily have to sew. They can teach you what you need to know. So Thursday mornings, join our quilting group. With that being said, please stand and face the baptismal font as we continue with our worship. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, forgive us when we fail to respond to your call with faith. Through your spirit, we stand in the assurance of your grace. Forgive us when we are shackled by our narrow understandings of discipleship and our clouded sense of purpose. Through your spirit, we are drawn into the light of your love. Forgive us when we fail to sense your presence in our past, to acknowledge your grace in the present moment, and to trust in you for our future. Through your spirit, we offer ourselves in discipleship. We are justified by faith to be at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. We stand together as your disciples. Amen. Amen. We continue with hymn number 510, found in your red hymnals underneath your pews.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have, have mercy, Christ. Christ. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have, have mercy, Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy Lord, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Let us pray. God of deliverance, you saved the people of Israel and chose Joshua to lead your people to the promised land. Choose us and equip us to live with faith and peace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome. Guess where I'm going tonight? Halloween Horror Nights. But that's not the subject of this particular children's sermon, <laughs> which we'll be discussing something much happier. Sure, because today is what? It's my birthday. Yes, it's my birthday. But let's not make it all about me. Should we or should we? Yeah, we should. Okay, let's make it all about me then. No, listen, it's my birthday, but I bring that up because I don't know about you guys, but do you do anything special on your birthday every year? Do you, Lil? Yeah. Yeah, yes, we, we do. <laughs> do you do anything special on your birthday every year? Yes. What do you do special on your birthday? Do you have cake? Yes. Is it got candles? Yes. Are there a particular number of candles that are on your cake? Sometimes just a candle with the number how old I am, and sometimes candles. That's a good one, a kind of candle with a number, because especially when you get to be as old as I am, the numbers are very important, because you just don't remember what they are anymore. So it's always good to have a number on your cake. Uh, are, do you tell stories on your birthday? No. Do you, like, remember, hey, you remember that birthday or anything? Do you tell any stories, like your parents tell you about when you were born or something? No. Well, you know, okay. Well, you know, I don't remember when I was born exactly either, so it's hard for me to tell about that story. But on our birthday, we have traditions, right? We have certain traditions that we do. And so on our birthdays, we always get whoever's birthday it is, everybody else, that person stays in bed, and everybody else gets up first thing in the morning and comes into their room with a coffee cake on our now broken birthday cake thing, right? And candles, and there's a number of candies on there, and they sing happy birthday, and you get your presents right away, right? First thing in the morning, right? That's our tradition. But you know, the interesting thing is, that tradition, my mom used to do that for us. And she did it, and she would have this little, um, you drink orange juice out of this little china, it's, it's like for a doll, toys, right? Little little tiny cups and stuff, you would do that. And so, and she would tell, and she did that, and she did that because her mom did it for her. 
and I found out that we were at a family reunion this summer, and I found out that all the other people in our family did the same thing I hadn't seen for 20 years. It's a tradition, and they all knew that their grandmothers had done it, and they told the stories about it. And this tradition got started, and it's like a family tradition, and it's kind of cool, because you remember this story, and when we talk about it, we talk about you know how grandma, this was grandma's tea set, and we remember grandma, and we have all these things. So it's kind of fun. It's fun because the tradition reminds us that it started from something, right? We all have traditions. So we have traditions as we come to church. So when we come to church, we have a Bible. It's got all, every, all those stories written in it, right? But it's easier if we share the stories, if we tell the stories to each other, right? That's why we read them in church and we go over them in Sunday school and we talk about them. Today, you know, those stories weren't always written down in a Bible. A long time ago, they just told the stories, right? They told the stories. And sometimes, guess what happened? People forgot. So today we're talking about in the Bible, Joshua, after, you know, Moses got everybody out of Egypt and Joshua got everybody over to Israel where they're going to, and they had the 12 tribes and they had 12 lands and they were all set up, right? All the Israel, they were all set up. And all, guess what they started doing? They started worshiping other gods. They forgot, they remembered the old gods, there were some new gods, and Joshua gathered up everybody and he told them a story. He said, God has told you to tell a story. And Joshua reminded everybody about the story, about how Abraham and Moses, and he told them about the whole story and how he got here and all that God had given them because they forgot. They had forgotten the story. And he said, by the way, are you guys in? Because this is the God I'm going to serve. And they said, yeah, we're in it. He's like, are you sure you're in? Because you've got to get rid of all these other gods. Are you going to serve this God? Do you remember the story? Are you in? And they said, yeah, we're in. He says, okay, I'm going to put a big rock here, okay? And, I, and you see that rock, okay? That is a witness. You'll remember that you guys have committed today. Now, we have a lot of symbols too, right? That rock didn't tell them anything. It wasn't a talking rock. It wasn't like at Disney World or something. It was no talking rock. It was just a big stone, and it was a symbol. What's symbols do we have sitting here today that remind us of our faith anybody see anything looking over my head anything over my head over that way anybody looking up do we see a symbol what is it the cross the cross awesome yes the cross and so we use crosses to remind ourselves of our faith to remind ourselves to tell those stories so we all remember what god did for us and we remember jesus who gave his life for us right so remember First, October 14th is my birthday. Second, <laughs> remember, way more importantly, that God loves you and Jesus died for you to save you from our sins, okay? And have a great day. God. Good morning. A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. <clears throat> and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir and to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst, and afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians 
and made the sea come between them and covered them, and your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you. And you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, sent out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Baor, to curse you. <clears throat> but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you, so I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored and towns that you had not built, and you lived in them. You ate the fruit of the vineyards and the olive yards that you did not plant. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve, a f and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses, he said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and he took a large stone and set it there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, said to Jesus, All this I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You 
In the year 1530, Francisco Pizarro stood on a beach of what is now northwestern part of South America, up near Venezuela, northern Peru. He was 50 years old. And he always seemed to be on the edge of greatness. Always a step behind in the shadows of the other Spanish conquistadors who had won gold and glory for the king of Spain. Now, after traveling up the west coast of South America from the very tip up to nearly the top, he was on the edge of greatness again. All the signs showed that there was a vast civilization just beyond the beach and the trees in the jungle that was there. A civilization ready to be conquered. But Pizarro's men were tired. And they thought this old man was just a little crazy. Because they couldn't see this promised land that he was describing. And the thought of going into a dark rainforest, that seemed like sheer suicide. So there on a beach, on the northwestern coast of Peru, Francisco Pizarro drew his sword and drew a line in the sand between him and his men. He looked them in the eye and he said this, Those who want to go with me, cross this line. I cannot promise you anything but hardships and possibly death. Those who wish comfort can return to Spain. But you will lose a great adventure and maybe great riches. 169 soldiers crossed the line in the sand. 13 first. And then the others. The rest boarded their ships and went home. Pizarro and his soldiers began a great adventure and conquered the greatest empire of the Americas, the kingdom of the Inca. Now, while Pizarro had plenty of faults, and his war against the Inca was a bloody and often ruthless affair. You can say that he did possess a decisive courage to go beyond the edge and on to greatness. The same was true for Joshua and the people of Israel, and as we hear in our reading this morning. We have fast-forwarded from last week where we stood at the bottom of Mount Sinai when God gave the Ten Commandments. And now we've moved forward 40-plus years after wandering in the wilderness for disobeying God. Joshua has now led this next generation into Canaan. Moses has died. The unfaithful generation died off in those 40 years and so then Joshua took them, crossed over into the land of Canaan. And after a very bloody war, again, something of a problem for folks in the 21st century to read, after this war, the people of Israel conquered the land God promised Abraham. Now an old man. Joshua draws a line in the sand for the people of Israel, just like Pizarro. This chapter that we just read, and that was a long reading, and I'm guessing some of you were really glad you didn't have to read some of those names. <laughs> Yay, Jade! <laughs> this entire chapter, Joshua reminds the people of Israel of God's promise by retelling the story again. The story that we have followed since Abraham's promise back in September to now. 
He reminds them of all that God has done for them. The covenant with Abraham for a promised land, many descendants, and to be a blessing to all the nations. Of the mighty acts God did in Moses' leadership that freed them from slavery in Egypt. God's preserving them in the wilderness. Joshua's leadership in battle in which he points to it was not his leadership but the power of God that gave them victory in the land so that they might have houses that they did not build, fields they did not clear, vineyards and olive trees which take 20, 30, 40 years to grow before they produce. The fruits of those which they never planted. And now he tells them that the great adventure with God, now lies ahead and not behind. Knowing what God has done for you, knowing the story of what God has done for you and your ancestors, how will you now live into the future? Choose. And then he speaks those famous words, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And that's really what today is about as well. That's why we are having our ministry fair today. Because it really just isn't an opportunity to sign up and volunteer. There's plenty of groups that do that, not only here in the church, but around the community. What we are looking at today, what we are celebrating today, is a Joshua moment before God. Because if you look around this place, up and down the hallways in this building in Schaefer Hall, you can see the road and hear the story of how God got us to here. Pastor Schaefer, who when he came to visit Winter Park found there wasn't a a Lutheran church, so he called the national office and said, there should be a a church here. They said, no, we don't have the time or money to do it. He said, would you mind if I do it? And they said, go for it. (laughs) And he did. There's a picture in the hallway that shows that first group after they had brought down a young seminary graduate by the name of Luther Kistler to be the associate pastor. And there in the mid-1950s, things took off from there. St. John's has grown. But it's been a roller coaster ride. There's no doubt about that. You read our history. You know if you were here, it's been boom or bust. It's been people coming and going. It's been crossing the lines and walking away the whole time. But God has been here throughout, guiding and protecting and preserving his people in this place called St. John. That's our past. That's the story of God's guiding and blessing his people here in brief. But we need to take the time to look around and see the future that God is offering now. Because after worship, in order for you to get your bratwurst and beer, you have to stand in line. And while you stand in line in that hallway towards Schaefer Hall, there are a bunch of tables. And there are people there with smiling faces who are happy to greet you and say, serve with us. You and your household serve the Lord, today. And each of these ministries is an opportunity to live in God's promised land and not to get stuck in the past of memories of what used to be or unrealized dreams for the future. 
but it's to live in God's promise now by sharing your unique individual gifts, by sharing yourself in service so that together we become the body of Christ. Paul put it this way when he wrote this, For just as the body is one and has many members, in all the body, all the body though many are one body, so it is with Christ. Now you all are the body of Christ and individually members of it. God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance and administration, forms of leadership in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? No. But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. That's sometimes a little hard to find that way. Horace Greeley was a famous newspaper publisher in the 1800s, and he once received a letter from a lady out west, and she asked him this. She said, Mr. Greeley, our church is in dire financial straits. We have tried everything to keep it going. A strawberry festival, an oyster supper, a donkey party. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Afraid to ask. A turkey dinner, and finally a box social. Will you please tell us, Dr. Greeley, how to keep a struggling church from closing? And his letter back to her contained two words. Try Christianity. We can't be church without each other. We cannot be St. John without you. I mean, yeah, the staff and I are here and we're working and we do our part in riding herd, but there's lots to be done. At this point, we're still riding herd on facility matters for lack of people. We've got a number of ministry teams that have a bunch of people, but they don't have a Joshua to lead them because no one wants to lead. Most churches are like this. We're no different than anyone else in that regard. Because, yes, your life is busy. And this fall seems so much busier Always seems to be that way. But you get to the point where it's so busy you don't even have time to answer an email. Because you know, with all the opportunities that are put before you and your family and your kids, you can't do it all. It's too many choices, too many needs. It'd be easier to convince yourself that if you just kind of stay where you're at, Tend worship a few times a month. You know, not really have time for that extra hour for Sunday school or a small group. Well, you know, that's good enough. God understands. It's not part of salvation. It's part of service. You can make that choice. But I'm here to tell you this morning, if you make that choice, you are missing out on a great adventure. In a promised land. A land out there that God has claimed and set before you and I. Believe me when I say that work, school, sports, even retirement, do not have a greater claim on you than Jesus Christ. And none of those will offer greater joy or purpose, no matter what you've been told. As Dr. Greeley said, try Christianity. Try following Jesus. Because following Jesus means crossing the line into discipleship. Living daily like Jesus, 
who has been said, you've already been saved by that cross. That hangs there every time you walk in here to remind you that's the done deal. That is the unconditional covenant. It goes back to Abraham. We've been reminded of that with three baptisms in the last six weeks. You have been brought through the waters of baptism from slavery to sin and to forgiven freedom by God himself. You've been brought into this new land so that those babies, one talking right now, yay! (laughs) So that girls like her, like the children who gathered here, may not just have a building to gather in, but a family of faith to grow into. A family of real people hanging on a real faith, sharing a real life by following Jesus. So in teaching, in working with your hands, in caring for children in need at Killarney Elementary, in creation care, in singing, in leading in worship, and in ways to serve that I haven't come up with, but you have been dreaming about and have yet to share. None of that can happen without you. Christ cannot take on flesh and blood in the world without you actually doing something. Problem is, I can't ask each of you personally. Doing personal requests works best, but there's too many of you and not enough time. So that's why I'm asking you this morning to get up and go explore, starting in that hallway. Explore the ministries that God has called us to and to commit your hands to something more than just sitting on them but to receive God's covenant promises and make that part of your daily journey, to make that the purpose in your life. Because look around. This place of blessing, you did not build. Look around, there are opportunities to grow in faith in Jesus and to serve in the world, opportunities that you did not create. Here is God's promised land. Here are resources and riches that have been given by God And are for you to share so that we can change the world. Here is God's promised future. Given to you freely with all the riches of Jesus Christ to make us his body now and for generations to come. Would you please stand? As your pastor, as your brother in Christ, I challenge you to offer yourself to God this day just as Joshua did long ago. You have heard the story. Knowing what God has done, how will you live into the future for St. John Lutheran Church? choose. Those who want to go with me, I want you to cross that line and go down that hallway. I cannot promise you anything but hardship, possibly death. And those who wish comfort, you can return or you can take a seat. 
but you will lose out on a great adventure and maybe great riches. Choose this day who you will serve. But as for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. We continue now with our next hymn. let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for God's will to be fulfilled among us, we pray persistently for the church, the world, and all people in need. 
Please join me in prayer by kneeling or being seated. Almighty God, holy and righteous, open our hearts to your living word. Break down our pride and self-assurance and transform us by your gentle mercy. Lord, in your mercy, bless workers who clear fields to prepare for the season to come. Bring the harvest of your creation to completion, even as we look forward to the blossoming of new life. Lord, in your mercy, exercise and establish your true justice in courtrooms, in prisons, and in neighborhoods. Guide those who manage great wealth to do so with generosity and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, pour out favor this day upon those who are afflicted and who feel far removed from you. Send them companions who will show them you are ever near. Lord, in your mercy, build up relationships among people of different beliefs and backgrounds. Use the cooperation between this congregation and others in our community to reveal your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, gather us with all the saints whom you have made righteous in the death and resurrection of Christ. Through him, give us all the gifts of your kingdom and life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, enfold all things in your compassion, O God, and bring us into your life through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet your neighbor with the peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Cindy, Hi. peace be with you. It's good to see you. I've missed you. Yes, you. Oh, oh! I'm glad you found that so nobody tripped on it. I just set it on the table and figured that out. Thank you. Uh, I wanted the chalice. Yes. We continue now with the offering and the choir anthem. And also...
Please stand. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one. Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day a Sunday overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in God, our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated until invited forward by the ushers. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you.
a God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Grant you the gifts of faith and hope. In Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We close with hymn number 603.